Hello again, welcome to the next episode of Solo Minutes. I am Peter Modler, and uh, today I want to tell you something about the importance of a deep look into the pulmonary artery. It's something that you should really practice because it provides you with a lot of important information in many patients. So usually what you want to get is that view. It's, it's based on the short axis uh, view of the heart. Um, a little bit straightened up towards the sp spine. So you get your pulmonary artery here, and it's dividing up into its branches. That's the right pulmonary artery, and this is the left pulmonary artery. So if you're able to get this, then you are a hero. So how can you get there? It's very easy. You start in uh, position one of the S-step protocol, with your reference mark of the transducer pointing towards the elbow of the patient. And what you do then is um, you slide towards the sternum and point towards the spine because the pulmonary artery goes straight up to the spine. So at the beginning, you get this short axis view that I think you are familiar with. So the aortic uh, uh, valve is in the middle. There's the left atrium here. This is the right atrium. This is the tricuspid valve here. This is the right ventricle. And the pulmonic valve is down here. And as you slide your transducer towards the sternum and point towards the spine, you get the main pulmonary artery and its branches. So let's go through it a little bit, a little bit slower. So once you get there, you get your... Uh, main pulmonary, pulmonary artery here, and this is the right pulmonary artery, and this is the left pulmonary artery. Normally, if you put color on it, you will see a blue signal with, of course, some aliasing in the middle, because once the um, maximum velocity exceeds the Nyquist limit of your, uh, of your color map here, then you will have the opposite color. So once it exceeds 0 0.9 meter per second, you won't have any blue anymore, but yellow instead. This is what's happening here. So you got your pulmonic valve here, and this is the right pulmonary artery, there's the left pulmonary artery. The same like here on the right side, it's a little bit magnificated here. So if you put on the video, turn on the video, you'll see your blue color going down there. Okay, this is a case of a young dog with a volume overloaded left ventricle, as you can see. And as you look deep into the pulmonary artery, you can already see that there's a nice PDA down here. So there's the right pulmonary artery there. You can see the left one here, but there is the PDA here. This, this is the ampulla and the aorta is down there. Yeah. So even if you don't have any Doppler turned on, you already know what the reason for the volume overload is because you see that PDA down there. And this is important because the surgeon wants to know if there is a PDA or if there is not a PDA. So just a little bit of a continuous signal does not always help. He want, the a surgeon will like to know what the PDA looks like, maybe the size of the PDA, so it's essential to look down into the pulmonary artery to, to make sure that there is a nice PDA visible. And once you turn on your color Doppler, you will see the continuous flow through the PDA towards the pulmon pulmonic valve. But this is, as you know, typical of the PDA. And this is the flow profile of the uh, spectral Doppler indicating a normal pressure difference between the systemic and pulmonary circulation. So it's allow around five meters per second, which equals about 100 millimeter, millimeters of mercury. This is a left-sided view of the PDA, can be accomplished from the left side of the chest. So you got your pulmonic valve up here. This is the pulmonary artery going down here. And this is the nice ampulla of the PDA with, with its opening here at the top. So uh, usually uh, a, a PDA with a huge volume overload causes a so-called aortic pseudostenosis. So there's a pseudostenosis of the left ventricular outflow tract causing 
uh, high outflow velocity across the LVOT. This is just because of the volume overloaded left ventricle. It's about three meters per second here, which is just indicating that there's a huge amount of volume overload. This is another case uh, with uh, a hypertrophied right heart due to pulmonary hypertension. And as you go down the pulmonary artery with your uh, echo, you will easily see, okay, there is the pulmonary artery and there is a PDA down here. And this PDA might be responsible for the pulmonary hypertension. So in this case, the PDA and the massive uh, flow uh, across the pulmonary circulation might have caused this pulmonary hypertension that's visible on the left side. But it's not always a PDA. If you look at this image, for instance, this was a very young spaniel with a volume overloaded left ventricle and some mitral regurg, even though the valves do not look very much changed in this case. So it might be a little bit thickened, but that's all. There's, um, I would say, a mild mitral regurg, but a huge am amount of left ventricular volume overload. And I said, as I looked deep into the pulmonary artery, I saw that here at the end of the visible right pulmonary artery, there is some continuous flow entering the right pulmonary artery. Yeah, there is a flow coming into the right pulmonary artery. I would have missed it if I just would have put my color over the pulmonic valve. So this is essential. You always should assess all the vessels so that you don't miss this jet here. And there was also some continuous flow, but the velocity was not very high, indicating that it's not a direct communication between the aorta and the uh, pul uh, pulmonary circulation. There might be a long way in between, causing a decrease in pressure gradient. And what we found on CT is millions of little little shunting vessels here yeah this is all collaterals here yeah on the cross section you can see there is one main vessel entering the right pulmonary artery this is the vessel that we found on our color doppler yeah it origins from tons of different collaterals that origin from intercostal vessels aorta or branches of the aorta. Same here. Yeah, this is just another section, different section. So on this uh, coronal view, you see the shunting vessel here, the main shunting vessel entering the right pulmonary artery with this huge amount of collaterals there. Same here. This is this vessel entering the right pulmonary artery. Another differential diagnosis, look at these patients, for instance. It's also a volume overloaded left heart. By the way, the right heart is also a little bit large. There is also some mitral regions present, but the valves do not look so much changed. A little bit, yes, but not too much. And when we look down into the pulmonary artery, we see some continuous flow, but it's not originating from the aorta directly into the left pulmonary artery as with a PDA. So a PDA always ends up at the beginning of the left pulmonary artery, but it's coming out from a coronary vessel. So it's just coming out from a coronary artery and ending up inside the main pulmonary artery at the level of the pulmonic valve. This is a coronary fistula in this case. So it's essential. I mean, if you just see a, co a continuous flow here, you might think, okay, could be a PDA or something different. And if you send them for surgery the, and the surgeon starts looking for a PDA and won't find it, he would be very disappointed. So it always makes sense to really thoroughly interrogate the pulmonary artery and its branches not to miss anything. This, for instance, is a tumor at the heart base causing some obstruction to flow into the left pulmonary artery. Yeah? This is a peripheral 
pulmonic stenosis because of a tumor. This can be a reason for a heart murmur because it causes flow acceleration here. Yeah? So if you're doing a, a murmur hunt and you don't look deep into the pulmonary artery, you might miss the origin of the heart murmur. There's another case. It's also interesting. It's a dog with pulmonic stenosis. So there's clearly a pulmonic stenosis here, some pulm pulmonic insufficiency as well. But if you look deep into the pulmonary artery, you see these double lines down there. Can you see them? These are heart worms. Yeah, these are heart worms. And it's it was important for me because you don't want to dilate a pulmonic valve in a dog that has heart worms in its pulmonary artery because if you disrupt the heart worm, the dog can develop some severe uh, deterioration of its clinical status. It can be end up in a shock. So it's very important to look down and not to miss these heart worms in that case. So it pays off to take a deep look into the pulmonary artery and it makes a difference for the surgeon or the interventionalist. If you, if you, if you see a continuous flow distal to the pulmonic valve, you need to make sure that there is truly a PDA there. Yeah? And you need to see that PDA because otherwise it could be something different and the surgeon might, uh, might be disappointed. The better your echo exam, the better for the patient, the owner, and the veterinarian. This is something that applies to all echoes, of course, and to all echo measurements and your views as well. But don't forget to look deep down into the pulmonary artery. I would encourage you to practice this. It really makes sense, and, and it can make a huge difference for your patient. Okay. I wish you a lot of fun practicing it. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Bye.